Okay, this is another uh, continuation um, of the of one of the episodes that we did yesterday, um, because there's something uh, really interesting that I just want to uh, spend a minute talking about, and it's in this in the mass addition component. We have two outputs, and I wish I realized this that this second output sooner because I didn't even realize it was there, and uh, I could have used it many times, and I, I spent a lot of time trying to do what this thing does. Um, so I, I'm embarrassed to admit how long it took me to realize it. Um, the typical output is, you know, the mass addition component takes all the values that we have and uh, it can give you the the uh, the summation of all those values combined. Um, but we have another output here called partial results. And that uh, output is going to give you the first number that's input and then the first number plus the second number and then it's going to give you the first number plus the second number plus the third number uh etc um and so you're going to end up as with as many lines uh in the list as you have as the as you what you input and each one is going to be the summation of all the values um above it and so that's how we were able to take the boxes from the ground plane and stack them, basically. What I did is I used a deconstruct box component um, to get the Z dimension of each box. And then uh, we deconstructed that, the domain of that, of the, the domain of the, the Z dimension. And so now we have a, a Z value for each box. And uh, we can take a look at that here. So the first box, um, has a Z value of you know 279.5 millimeters. And then the second box, uh, 202, as you can see here, 202, and et cetera. Um, and each one's getting smaller, obviously. And so if we do a mass addition, we now we can get uh, basically this dimension. Uh, and, then, and then since, since uh, the second uh, item in the list is going to be uh, this the second item plus the first item it's going to be this this dimension plus this dimension and that's how um, and then th and then the next item is going to be this dimension plus this dimension plus this dimension and that's how um, we're able to create the translation vectors that we need to uh, to move the boxes and um, basically we're, we're taking this set of data and we're going to sort it because we actually want the first one we don't want the first one to move uh, we want the second one to move in the dimension of the first one. Okay, so again, so the the list of the B reps is going from the big box to the second biggest to the third biggest, but these numbers are going. Uh, it, uh, we need the numbers to be going so that um, the the first box doesn't move. The second box moves. Uh, 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 the second box is moved in the dimension of the first box. So we're going to shift the list by negative one. Uh, negative one shift offset and then we're going to replace the first item in the list uh, because the first item uh, we shifted it so basically the last item goes to the top and so we're just going to remove that first list item so now the first list item is zero and the second list item is the dimension of the big box the third list item is the dimension of the big box plus the second box um, second biggest box and so now we can create these the translation vectors that we need to move um, the boxes, um, and and that's a basically uh, you know essentially that's how we achieved that the stacking of the boxes. So it's pretty it's a it's a pretty useful function um, to to have this partial results, and it's something that I use uh, I use all the time, and I think you'll probably find a use for it at some point. Um, yeah, let me know. Uh, let me know if you, if you ever, you know, if you ever find a use for that uh, for that functionality.